Hello everyone, this is Wise Exotics. This is our new plant unboxing I'm going to do. It's from CuriousPlants.com. Okay, so once inside, there's another box or a thing. They even put a um, fragile sticker and handle with care on the top. I'm really thankful for that. My male people have a problem with chucking things over my fence, even though the gates are open and whatnot, or not ringing the bell. They actually ring the doorbell, and they did do everything correctly so I'm very thankful for that. Um, so inside the box this should be a Cephalotus folliculi which is the Australian pitcher plant. I've really wanted one and I finally found one on caresplants.com so let's see how this looks. Okay so on initial opening there is a planting adjustment congression. Your plants please give your current friend the best well care and my shock. Please follow our planting adjustments online and care instructions which I will read. Um, Certificate of Nursery Inspection. Interesting. Department of Agriculture, Ohio. So we're talking business inspecting accomplice. Oh, interesting. So I pop two of the little packaging things off, and there is the plant on the inside. This was a medium plant. It was going for $56, I believe. The larger plant was 66 I don't know. So, as I stated, it's a Cephalotus follicula follicularis. You're supposed to have two L's. Um, as you can see, curiousplant.com. The temperature range of this plant is actually different than the Nepenthes. Nepenthes, such as um, Suki that I showed prior, like indoors, and some other one, like it to have a nice temperature drain up. This is more like a Highland Nepenthes. They like a good temperature drop. They don't actually have a dormancy like a lot of carnivorous plants. And they're another viney species, but they kind of vine sideways and around on their structure. Um, it's interesting. Here is the little guy, girl, by itself. So as you can see, it has these beautiful pictures. I actually really like the coloration. I was thinking I was getting a bright green one, but wow, look at this. Now one of the things that's interesting about them is that M that you'll find. But they've got a nice little window. I'm trying not to get this guy shocked too much. I'm going to turn off the light. Okay, less bright light, not to scare the little plant. Um, I'm going to probably keep this out of high intense light for a while. They do like it outside. Um, my temperature ranges are perfect for it in terms of acclimation in my greenhouse. So I'll probably leave it there in the lower tray. But it also... I'm planning to put this outside because this species actually can handle my outside temperatures such as my sarcinia, fly traps, and other things have been able to handle fine. And they also can, can take a, a light frost, not fully freezing mind you, but a light frost and supposedly take it out. They're actually from Australia in this one little spot. Um, they're much like any other canaris plant. They like um, pure water, very poor soil, you know, of nutrients. But one thing that's slightly different from them from what I've been reading and researching is where most plants you want to just keep them moist all the time. This species, you want to drain it, let it drain almost all the way until it's just not as wet on the surface, and then you water them. They like to be drained down. Okay, I'm in the greenhouse now with the Nepenthes. As you can see, they're all doing quite happy. I did trim up some of the older pitchers that were starting to die. You know, you can tell it when the pitcher on a Nepenthes is kind of half dead like that, it's still usable. As you can see, there's a nice amount of goo in there. No bugs, interestingly enough. I did put an Osma coat pellet in there. Um, rather large pitcher in comparison to size, I just realized that. So this is a Cephalotus folliculi. So in comparison of these two species, you can kind of see how they're similar. Both got a lip, uh, a lid, and they both kind of use that window trick. This is more like a Saracenia. This bit of hairs, as you notice on some of these, there's like a hairy thing. That's for insects, I believe, to climb up and go into it. It's a little easier. This one actually vines slowly, as you can see. It's almost like an ivy-like plant. Um, the two species here are technically called convergent evolution species, where this one is a single in its... It is literally the only one in its species. The, there are no more, it's just that. Cephalotus folliculi. Nepenthes, on the other hand, as you can see, there's a huge variety in crossbreeding and whatnot. This only 
comes from Australia, where this can be found in Borneo, the Philippines, Indonesia, Southeast Asia, etc. Um, so I'm going to put this one in here, and I'm going to let it acclimate. I'm going to put it in the back so it doesn't get too much shock, or too much light. You know there's plenty of plants. I'm actually going to go out and see if I can expand the greenhouse by getting another one of these huge um, tall stand things so I can put more plants on the side, further expand, because this seems to be about the happy spot for these plants, and my other truck mullins like to be up above. So that's our new Cephalotus folliculi. Thanks for watching.